Well, I think the main uh, item is that you can't see it, and what you can't see, you don't believe. Um, now, many patients who have stable angina report, if you ask them, about uh, resting angina as well. And uh, often you have to ask them because their main problem is they can't get up a flight of stairs. And that is really uh, nasty because they, they cannot um, live, they, they, are, they are inhibited in, in their daily activities. And they don't really mind that sometimes at night they have a little bit of chest oppression. So if you ask them, you will find a lot of them have resting angina. And resting angina, of course, can only be due to two things. One is coronary vasospasm and the other thing is that they have thrombotic events like seven times a week which is quite unlikely. That's a very interesting question and I don't have the answer to this. Now when I first met these patients who reported about uh, funny symptoms, resting angina, um, I thought that, was, that must be myocarditis. Why did I think that? Because they said it started six weeks ago on Thursday. So you never had that before? No, 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 no. Now what can start dramatically, not slowly, but like a switch on a Thursday six weeks ago. It can only be something infectious and you often have the um, the history of eight weeks before I had some terrible flu, I went to the dentist, I had a bad tooth, something like that. Trigger, seems to trigger it. Now whether this is myocarditis or whether you have some pre-existing condition being triggered by the inflammation, I really don't know. But there seems to be some connection and of course when you look at patients with angina and you do a biopsy, you look at the vessels, you often see some low grade inflammation. So maybe there is a connection, but I, that's as much as I know. Now that depends a great deal on where you live because the traditions and the uh, pathways are different in different countries. Also, although we pretend that we have a European guideline, uh, doctors in Germany approach the patient totally different than doctors in Great Britain. Now in Germany many of these patients are being cast on the demand of their GP, on their own demand, because they want to know what is going on because they're afraid. Now when you cath them very often you don't find coronary artery disease and we in my uh, hospital in Stuttgart we perform acetylcholine testing then and try to provoke spasm. We often elicit spasm, we reproduce the symptoms and at least we know what the patient has which is satisfying for the doctor but also for the patient because he or she knows that she is not a psychiatric case, which some of these patients uh, tend to believe because they had several cats before and they were told they were healthy. So um, uh, that, that is for the patient who is on the table anyway. But the patient who comes to your practice and just complains about these things, you, you have to find out uh, the typical features of resting angina spasm, meaning um, good exercise capacity, but dramatic resting angina. That's usually epicardial spasm. And then you have a mixture of uh, complaints, patients who are short of breath when they climb stairs, but they also have some mild resting angina this is usually microvascular so epicardial spasm you just think it is there and you give the patient um, a calcium antagonist you bring him back two weeks later and if he says everything's fine that was the right diagnosis and the right treatment microvascular is a little bit more difficult you can also try to treat it but in about one-third of patients there is no treatment effect and then you're in doubt whether the diagnosis was correct and then you can start um, for instance doing a, a stress echo if a stress echo elicits the angina but doesn't show any wall motion abnormalities microvascular angina is highly likely and if you're a rich man you can send the patient to have a PET examination showing the reduction in, um, in um, um, coronary flow reserve and that makes the diagnosis.